All right, the next one, uh, next item on our is vision of the board retreat dates. Okay, Mr. Skinkus. Uh, skip tentative budget? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> tentative budget. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, yes, yes, man. Man. Tim, can I have 20 bucks because I, I did it, but they didn't go for it. All right, so you can pull up in your board book the tentative budget, which I just did. And that was up since June 26. Yep. And Tim has some, uh, he received some questions from Mr. Walsh, and plus he was going to address some of that. We got, we updated a few things, so if Tim wanted to talk to that. I ask you a question first, Kevin. I don't have a problem if the thought is we want to vote on this and just get it out there the first time. And you're going to do a revised one with the comparison of actual the budget, this year's actual budget, and address all. I'm sure other people have more questions if you prefer. It's already 915 and just address them next time unless you and I think you know it's up to you what I would think would help is let's take a few minutes before we post it publicly or the board votes on this okay. is that he at least gives you Give a general idea highlights. of the okay. assumptions sure uh, the just so the board's familiar with the process as well as the community that's watching a bit it has to, a tentative budget has to be posted for at least 30 days before it can be approved so what Tim and I were thinking is the board would approve this tentative budget he'll review the general assumptions at the August meeting, uh, during before the August meeting, the board would receive a second draft that would have some of the changes and more of the actuals in there from June 30th. Tim would, during his monthly budget report, could address some of those and how it was changed and updated. And then the board would take action on this in September. So really, there's almost two months where you have time to review it, look at it, but you have ask to, questions. You have to be able to make a motion and post it for public viewing. So. That's what That's we're today. recommending today. Okay. Okay. And the hearing will be in September. Correct. The hearing will be in September, September formally. And Marianne, where, where where is the budget available? People that are watching today, where is it at? Um, it will be on the website. Under the board. Under board. board. And there's uh, probably printed copy in the business office. Right. We okay. print several copies and keep them in the business office for people. Okay. Any other places? Libraries in. or anything like that? Or? Okay. No. All right. So Tim, just general assumptions. Okay. Um. What page you want to say? Mary Ann did send out today. Um, there was a, a, a request that the um, that the beginning fund balances were projections as of uh, about June 26th. We now obviously have the actual numbers, so there is a um, revised big picture. The summary report is on the board book page. Page two. Yes. Okay. And that includes the, the beginning fund balances as they are, you know, as they were presented earlier with the monthly financial report. Um, what that shows is that, that based on the operating expenses, which obviously haven't changed, our fund balance as a percent of operating expenses for next year would go from 24.5% up to about 29.5%. Uh, simply because the fund balances right now are, are, are larger than, than what we had originally projected. I thought you said earlier that we're going to end the year around 30% this year. And this year, yeah. The, yeah. For next year, we're looking at, at the 29.4%. So we're going to... This year, we're at about 29.9 or something. So we're going to stay... Our revenues and expenses are going to equal each other in the next budget? We have a deficit of... There's a deficit in here projected up to $204,000 in the operating fund. So relatively, yeah, it stays relatively close. Maybe you should clarify deficit because it's it's less money than we want to, but our fund balance is still there, but we're dipping into the fund balance, right? When you say deficit, it's not I that. Would, we would only be paying into the fund balance of the, the working cash fund for 200000 when it was projected in February being about $1.6 million. So I think that's important to communicate. Okay. The, the major revenue item is the real estate taxes, and those have been budgeted. <clears throat> I, I, I included a calculation sheet in here. I think it was page 39. I'm what went out to you. And I, I, I looked at the 2010 levy and what we collected in 2011. And as I said earlier, it was a little over 98%. So I used 98% um, collections for, for this, this budget. Uh, 
some of the other items in the revenue side the, the increases in the registration fees the pay to participates um, we did have <clears throat> an item that I put in there the new fee for service revenue that's a program that you approved the the the, uh, the contracts with Go Solutions a couple of months ago that's a program where we receive a reimbursement from the state for special education services to people who um, are on Medicaid and this is something we've we've done Medicaid outreach before we've never done this and this is going to generate about ten thousand dollars in additional revenue for us that we've never had before um, th there were a number of items where I, I budgeted the revenue uh, pretty much at the, at the actual amounts for 2012 food service um, as the rentals uh, some of those types of items that were significantly higher than this year the actual numbers were considerably higher than what we had budgeted uh, for the year so I, I raised those budget numbers for next year up closer to where the actuals were um, on, on s some of the items I, I'm budgeting close to the same as what we've we've taken in this year general state aid for example I didn't increase we did have a, a, a slight increase in our average daily attendance but until we get a solid number from the state I just budgeted the same amount of money I'm sure by September we're gonna obviously we're gonna start receiving the general state aid in, in August we'll have a, a firmer number and we can adjust mm -hmm. that um, but for just to be conservative I budgeted the same as this year federal revenue is mostly grants they don't really go up I think our biggest items are our title one and title two grants I think one's going up by a thousand dollars and one's going down by a thousand dollars so they basically are, are being budgeted um, they're being budgeted the allocated amounts but they really aren't changing very much also included in there is the the the, um, the, the grant that we're receiving from Airmark forty thousand dollars and the cell tower revenue is increased by thirty three thousand dollars we've already started receiving the money from Verizon I think they're working right now on getting up on the tower but they've started paying us for that those are the major items in terms of the revenue on the expenditure side we've created an account um, to pay for the the run out of the medical and dental claims we talked about back when EBC was here we're gonna have about hundred thirty nine thousand dollars in run out claims that's that's in in the education fund budget is um, that conservative enough I, th I think so I mean that was their projections all right um, one of the things that we're not going to have next year on any of the financials received is a self-insurance fund. Obviously, that's that's not going to be there. Um, the ERO costs drop significantly. We still have to pay ERO costs for two individuals that are retiring, but there are about four or five this past year that we had to pay back, you know, last July or August. Um, so we're dropping that by $166,000. The retirement stipends are in there for the four people that are re that retired at the end of this school year that we agreed to pay the twenty five thousand uh, dollars to them as an incentive to retire basically this, Tim and so we're not sitting here and having you just yeah. read this back to the board just on the assumptions I think there were one or two questions you just want to quickly just touch on those so that the board is okay on the general assumptions and we can approve the tentative okay Tim, um, one quick question for you by, by going off the of self-insurance that fund calculation become very favorable because now you've pulled 2.5 million dollars out of operating expenses mm -hmm. as a calculation for that ending fund balance is that true because you 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 have 2.5 sitting in education expense, expense. when you do it, then you show 2.5 in revenue and then you show 2.5 in the self-insurance now all of a sudden it double count of 2.5 is out of your expenditure calculation correct so suddenly where if you look at any fund balance off of this year's expenditures we're at 24 percent you take the 2.5 up we jump up to 29 percent correct yeah okay. because when I calculate that percentage the fund balance is a percentage of expenditures right I pull the self-insurance out because that that, that expense is already in there in education so we, we have to caution that fund balance percent that if we still had self-insurance we'd be still we'd be closer to 24 percent well but we also have revenue of, of I know but in the case of this, yeah. this simple calculation the reserve doesn't look at the revenues right right you don't yeah. look at the revenues when you're looking at the reserve percentage of expenses okay so okay okay any questions that will address the major ones you want you got you, you need to add for certified staff cuts you have in here I know one of the comments from the board 
was you have in there about the administrative salaries being frozen, but yet we don't have the average increase for certified staff? The average is about 6.5% by contract. So, so we should put that in the assumptions. Yes, I'll add that to the assumptions. Um, there was a question on the health insurance. The health insurance rates went down by 0.5%. Actually, the overall cost didn't. Um, but the, the, the cost for the people, the reductions in the staff, is factored in over and above that. So, so we need to change cost to rates? Right. Right. Um, salaried stipends are just per contract. The technology is, is the, the an increase of $30,000. We're purchasing a computer lab. And you, and you, um, me and you met that. with Mike today. Met with Mike. They're six and a half years old. We yeah. have the age and obsolescence chart with our tech department to show which labs need to be replaced. Right. Last year, the budget for technology was cut by forty thousand, where it was just ten thousand. So all we were able to purchase is if there was any major, somebody lost a machine here or a machine there. This is the first lab that's being replaced, which is why we put back in the thirty thousand for I think it's room two fifty eight. Yes. And then we're going to save the rest of those computers for parts. And I know a board member had asked this question, that's so why I'm providing a little more detail. But I want to touch on that. Yeah, the only thing, other thing I wanted to touch on was the LADSI expenses increased fairly significantly, and that's because they have come up with a reallocation system of how they allocate their administrative expenses. We actually were benefit under, un, benefiting under the old system. The smaller schools were getting charged with less administrative expenses um, than, than the other schools, and so they've reallocated that. So our charge for administrative expenses went up. Okay. Any other questions, or do I have a motion that we can put this up? Tim, could you clarify what's our our fund balance right now? You said it was twenty nine. I thought the it's percentage projected to be twenty nine. Right. What's it? What's it right now? The percentage at the at the end of June, this, this past fiscal year, the percentage is twenty nine point nine seven. It's twenty nine. He's not including the two point five six million because we did of self correct. insurance expenditures yeah. in the calculation. So pull that out when you look at your expenditures of 22.9 million this year. Then you say to calculate that in, and you'll see it's close to 29. Okay. All right. But so we still came in above our. Yeah, you did. You yeah. still you wound up at 24 points if you looked at the 22 right. number. You're okay. Right. All right. So it was so so 24. Now we. Spending under control. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. So can I have a motion on this? Hello, Gary. Resolved that the Board of Education of the High School District 208, Cook County, Illinois, hereby approves and adopts the budget containing estimates of amounts available in each fund as a tentative budget for said school district for fiscal year 2012 2013. And be it further resolved that this tentative budget following adoption by this Board of Education shall be made conveniently available to the public for inspection for at least 30 days prior to the final adoption thereof. At the September 12, 2012 board meeting. September 11. September 11, 2012 board meeting. All right. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gary Gritchen. Any other discussion? Yeah, I have a couple items. B budget changes. W when we pass this tentative budget, is it the understanding of the board that we're not going to be doing budget changes within departments or within accounts during the year? And I think that was the understanding of last year. Does anyone have an understanding different than that? Yeah, we weren't switching budget to cover a shortfall for somebody else to make it look good. Right, because in years past, when you delve into the numbers, that, w that type of thing was taking place. And Tim, you don't do that now, am I right? No. You didn't do it last year? I mean, no. This, right. So it's my understanding that in passing that, and passing the, the budget in September that that'll still be in play this year and, and the second item you know I know we've only had this for a little time period but we've gone through almost every major chunk of this budget we've gone through the personnel we've gone through the pay for play we've gone through the activities pay for play we've converted to the insurance pool we've gone to a class size policy We've, we've approved basic class sizes. The four retired teachers, one or more of them contacted us to retire, and one or more of them contacted, we contacted them and came to an understanding to retire. 
does anyone see any area where they're going to bring questions and changes such as we went through last summer? What do you mean? I'm sorry, Michael. Like what? Like you know, I think we've we've kind of we've kind of gone through every piece of the budget yeah. separately. You know, we we had the whole master schedule, class size, how many teachers do we need? We've had the how much are we going to charge pay to play? How much are we going to charge for facilities rental use? I mean, we've gone through these chunks in the last months. So, does anyone see any areas that? they anticipate asking for changes that, that they know about now. Based off the, the questions that I received, get your crystal ball out. based on the questions we received from Tim Walsh, uh, a lot of them were more just putting in more specifics and the assumptions to define the fee for service, the $100,000 in retirement. And those are some things that as a advisory council, we talked a little bit about and Tim and I talked about more today. The only thing I could see um, to, to add to what you're asking, and I appreciate you asking it, is when the board gets their second draft before the August meeting and it's versus actuals, you will see a, a few columns that have like a 100% increase. And what I told Tim that we need to make sure get added to the assumptions is like if we moved an entire salary over from one department and put it where that actually should be, that's why you would see those so we wanted to make sure a few of those. That's why some one of one hundred percent. Right. Mm -hmm. But other than that, there shouldn't be because I. There shouldn't be money more. Big changes. I mean, we told you the one that came in significantly lower was the tax appeals, and we're going to leave it the same based on Franzic's recommendation. Well, I I would say two things. One is there's a couple things we asked for. We still must get like earmarked money. I expect to be reported on that where money is earmarked so we know and whether we agree with it. And the second one what is do you mean by that? Yeah, what is that? we got several reports in the last couple months where there were funds available because they were earmarked for a purpose. And but those are in activity them. accounts, those aren't in the budget. Can you talk grants? The C team had money. There, those are, that was the C team's activity Every account. one of them was an activity account? As of June 30th, we had him close out those accounts. Okay. The second thing is getting to Mike's other point of do you transfer between again maybe it's my odd way of thinking but that's why I want to see what the IT budget is. Whatever Mike comes up with if he says we're going to buy 30 computers and that's the IT budget I don't think at the end of the year because the department has 10,000 left they should, whatever the number is 2,000 they should be able to buy uh, computer unless it was in the budget or unless based on the IT portion of the budget he's recommending that we use additional funds to buy that. I, I struggle with that a little when we say we don't take funds out of other accounts to do it but we had an IT budget but we took bought a computer for one area because they had money left over. I, I see that. Was that the yearbook? That was a yearbook one, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they had money in their activity account to pay for that, am I right or wrong? No, it was in, no, their, it wasn't it was in their board account. account. It was in their board account? But I think what we did differently this year so the board understands is that Pam and Tim did a great job going through the supply budgets for every department, more on like a, a zero-based budgeting, not, hey, this was your supply budget last year, should we add 3%? We went through and said, what do you need, what don't you need? So in some of those conversations, they might say, hey, the laptop that we use for department meetings, it's on its last leg or, I mean, so there, we have to leave them some, I mean, I think we should trust, I, I mean, with the exception that they wouldn't go out and buy 10 computers and spend a 10th out, I think we have to leave them some flexibility within their supply budgets. But Mike, let me ask you a question. If, I, if I'm in the English department and I go to Kevin and, or Pam, I go to Pam and I said, you know, our laptop is, the reason for team meetings is, like this gerbil died and I need to get a new one. Uh, but you know what the computer looks like. You would make that decision. You don't need a new computer. Or am I right? You're the one that has the final say of it, right? You would try, of course, to fix it first and do some certain, certain things. And generally, if it's not budgeted for in the current year, you know, they'll have to wait until 
the next year that it would come to that and you have to take that into account. The example I, that keeps coming up back in my mind is I think might have been Mr. Welch, not sure who it was. Somebody said, hey, every year we buy 10,000 beakers because that's always what we've done. We bought 10,000 beakers to start a school year. <coughs> this year, once again, Pam and Tim went through and said, how many beakers? I'm, I'm using this as an example, but. Not to pick on science. Right. They said, <laughs> we're not buying 10,000. What exactly do you need? And they did an excellent job, the two of them getting that down by 20 to 30 percent across the board so I don't think there's a lot of flex I mean there might be some flexibility but I don't think to a point to where you know the, the other thing that I would I'll probably have you know, a question is because I couldn't figure out here I'd like to know for instance how much are we spending on staff development yeah you know that we budgeted money for staff development how much is it enough yeah, because that question you came up earlier. Very easily tell that from the way this budget information is presented. Right. Pam got Christmas in July today. She was it was identified that her staff development budget not only stayed the same as last year, but it went up by like a thousand or two thousand dollars. Okay. So we'll have almost eighteen thousand dollars for staff development for a staff of eighty five, which you know, where we're at in tough times is a, is is good. I mean if we if things are brighter we, could like to see more but I, I I mean is that an accurate number Tim I think yeah if you look on the revenue side under the federal revenue there's a, a line item for title two which is a grant that we get to from the federal government and that money is set aside and only can be used for staff development um, so that's the money that Pam will have this year for staff so development we limit our staff development to what the federal government is. well that, that's just we have in this yeah. things where you don't file for my question. It's difficult to pick every item that you think, are we, you know, and again, I would expect Pam and Kevin to come to us and say, regardless of what we did before, in order to maintain our high performing school, I don't know what the number is. If 18,000 enough fine, if it should be 25,000, I hope somebody's coming and saying we need to spend right. 25,000. I, I think this, you know, Pam and I had some real good discussions about that today, and that's where the, the board needs to understand, like, you know, your, our, our building principal is a, is a good building principal. She's advocating for all of it. So if it was her choice, she would want, and I need to know from you, like, okay, I, I agree with her. These are, are important. Can we give this extra money? So we're, the things we felt uh, that we, we, we're at a place to where we feel that there's some, re our recommendations are pretty strong aligned with the budget. You know, Pam had offered to me to cut staff development more to try to save some other things. And what we found out is that this is grant money, so it's really not going to have to be cut at all. It will be at least, if not a little more than what she had last year. The, the staff development is different from continuing education money, correct? Or correct. No? And staff so development is for people attending workshops, bringing in guest speakers, uh, resources to help us with uh, things that will help develop our staff and our programs so we talked about the continuing education did we set a policy or procedure that it has to be from an accredited or is that part of the that's contract? part of our closed session that we're going to talk okay. about today okay any other discussion well last year changes came and we probably don't expect if we have surprise enrollments right I mean Right. Not that we anticipate that, but that could throw a wild card and we may have to have another Sure. Unit so what, what, we, what we plan for, what the board's been seeing in the last couple of HR reports that you've been approving in closed session is that, you know, we're at, a, we're at what I, I projected, about 85 teachers with plus or minus that one, 1 1.2 in the emergency of those enrollments. We've started to tap into that a little bit as we've reached some conflicts and we're working that through PAM, but the budgeted included a 1.0 1.24 those okay so okay. the only way what I would have to come back to you for more is if it really went crazy at residency and, and that many numbers changed okay. Okay. I just want to get a sense for Kevin that the board is is happy at this point we're not going to come and try to add a sport or subtract a sport oh. or add an activity or subtract an activity and 
you know, do something that's going to... Well, I think... I think without asking our partners in education, the union, if, if that's okay with them, that we, that we look like... You know, I think we've done an outstanding job in the last months to get this far and and um, to get to get this budget where it is. And I think, you know, uh, the community should be happy that we've done what we've done in, in the areas that, that we've all talked about in looking at the expenditure side of the house at this point. Well, I'd like to add something. Mm. The fact is it's, it's not listed on the budget summary. I mean, we're basically giving f half a million dollars in raises to our teachers. If, we, if they would have accepted some type of a freeze, we'd have a budget surplus of like $300,000. Yeah. Plenty of money for staff development. Yeah, but contractually, you know, we had negotiations. We talked. We didn't get it done. You know, okay. we're, we're functioning on a little less staff. True. So, That's which, nice which we're still going to function and provide classes and education to these kids, and I think, I think we're in a good spot right now. And we added some stuff that we didn't have last year. And, right. we, and you know, some some things that the community input didn't necessarily help us, but we had a letter this year from a prior student telling us not to affect the, the radio and TV program. <laughs> we had a student come before us to advocate for his sport and said and said you know cut any other sport but this sport and we had a whole team come in and advocate for their sport which you know makes the decisions that we had to make tough but i think you know i i, I commend the board for getting this far and, and and having it done at this this point this year which is but a better position than last year like the one thing we don't know is we know people are just focused on cost. We've done a good job. We don't have any results of how our students performed this year, or the effect of what's going to have next year. And that, at the end of the day, is at but least as important as the numbers. I disagree with you right now. I think that Pam would not, and Pam and Kevin would not give us a budget, and also an educational staffing, that would say would shortchange the students uh, for next year. I don't think they would do that. They would even come up and complain about that and be able to say, I can't believe you're doing this. I think that the budget right now is financially responsible. It has looked at, you know, our cost and everything else, but also has delivered a quality education for our kids for this coming year. Okay, well, and also, in all from school-wise to extracurricular-wise to everything. So I know that you, you've made comments uh, saying that, you know, we're focusing on cost-cutting. If they did not focus on cost-cutting, you would have a bigger deficit and you would hurt the kids even more. I appreciate you disagree yeah. with me. So. I don't like the editorial, but my point is we have a lot of goals. This is one goal, the reserve. You know, we need to see all these other goals of how the ACT scores were and those types. That, that was my point. We're measuring ourselves on those performance indicators, too, and at right at this point, we don't know what the result and is. And the results, we will have September, October. Yeah. That's one of the steps. Right. Well, I'd like to make a comment, too. This time last year, Kevin had just been here for 10 days. So, you know, we can all pat ourselves on the back. Oh, we got the budget done really early, but you started officially, right? July 1st. And four board members had just come on in May and had to do what we've done this whole year, 12 months, looking at every line and a lot of questions. So it took 12 months to get here. And if there was frustration last year at July 1st, that was 10 days of looking and just two months. So it goes to show that there's a long process. Sure. That's been a long year, a hard year's work. So, I mean, it's only a year, but you're well, probably glad you're not only nine days. Yes. Yet. But to build on to you, too, is I think that Kevin and his leadership team saw right away saying, hey, let's get this early registration. Let's see what our staffing needs are going to be. Let's see what we need, where we need it, where we can cut, where we can't cut to sacrifice that. I think that's cool too because you proactively said, "That's not the wait. Let's take it right away and do that." And I think that that's a kudo for all. Of us. All right, so good job, um, Marion. You want to go for the vote? Dr. King. Yes. Mr. Moon. Yep. Mr. Walsh. Yes. Mr. Welch. Yes. Mr. Britchen. Yes. Ms. Ruska. Yes. Mr. Cindy. Yes. <laughs>